So what is new in Autodesk Vault Professional 2026? Let's find out. First up, we have archiving. So if I go into my Vault Server console, I can right click on my Vault. And now in 2026, I can select Enable Archive. And now I must enter a folder directory for my Vault Archives file store. This is a location where I can archive data to when it's no longer used in my production vault. It might be good practice to keep this file store on a separate drive on your server. So with my archive status column visible, I can now group select a number of files. I can right click and I can select archive. And if I select yes to archive file server, what will happen is I will get it. Uh, my status updated to to be archived. And after a period of time, when the server has perform the archiving task, it will move these files into the, the archive file store and it will update the archive status just to archive. You can also archive by folder, so I can simply right click on a folder and select archive. And this will update the archive status for that folder to to be archived. So I just want to quickly talk about the benefits of archiving your data in Vault. Um, ultimately, at the end of a project, you may decide to archive your data, essentially move it from the production file store to an archive file store. You may work in a large company that has data retention policies. You may wish to be reducing the size of your Vault's file store to speed up the migration process as you're upgrading your Vault. Suppose, for instance, your vault has been in existence for 10 years, it may be necessary to start getting rid of some of the older data or just archiving that data so it is backed up and retained, but detached from your vault. Next up we have the trash bin, uh, which is much like the wing windows recycling bin. So in our vault settings we can go to behaviors and we have enable trash bin. There's a configure option here where we can set the trash bin to automatically empty every 30 days. So when we enable this, if we select one of our files, we can right click and when we select delete, we can click yes. Now, normally you don't want to delete files in Vault, you want to make them obsolete when they're no longer in use. But if you absolutely must delete a file, you can do so with an administrator account. And when you delete a file, it will appear in your trash bin. You will no longer uh, permanently delete that file on its first delete. You must empty your trash bin. So you can right click on the file and you can select restore or you can select permanently delete or you can right click on the trash bin itself and you can select empty bin. Next up, we have job queue priority. So you might be familiar with the vault job queue. Let's say, for instance, a user has decided to generate a thousand PDFs and they've group selected a thousand drawings in your vault, right clicked and sent the job of creating the PDFs for each of those files to the job queue. Now, let's say you've come along as a separate user and you've decided you need to update a particular file. You might want to push it through an approval process or you might want to create a step or some job that requires the job processor. Now, we may be even using third-party add-ons like Symmetry Technology Civilia Vault to generate a separate file or generate an email or generate a bill of materials or something like that. But ultimately, the problem is you have to wait now a couple of hours for all of the jobs in the queue to free up before you can get your job done. Well, the great thing you can do now with Vault 2026 is you can go into the job queue, you can find your job, and you can right click and you can go set to top priority. There's also a button at the top of the screen for set to top priority. And that will bump your job up to the number one priority and that job will get completed immediately. It'll be the next job to be run by a job processor. Saving you the need to wait for the job queue to complete if you have an urgent job or a job that must be complete as soon as possible. Next, we have the user account disabled timeout. This allows administrators to set a time limit for vault access when enabling a user in vault. So if I select a user here, we have all of the roles and vaults and groups that that user is connected to. But here under the enable user option, we now have disable on. And if we get this drop down here, we get a calendar and we can set a date, say for instance, a couple of months out to determine when that user will no longer be able to access the vault. And if I click OK here, You'll also see a new column here in the user group and management section. Uh, and this is disable on and a date. So you can use this to control access for 
users and when that access will be disabled if you want to give temporary access to a user to your vault. Next up, we have the hyperlinks in Vault Properties. So another new useful feature, you can put a URL into a property in Vault and that can be used as a hyperlink by a user. Some useful options here, you might use this to link to a vendor website or you might use it to link to a separate system like a PLM platform like Autodesk uh, Fusion Manage or Civilia Core, for instance. Okay, finally, and um, this one is for the developers out there. Um, Autodesk have released Vault Data APIs. Um, so this actually got released with Vault 2025.2, but I think it's worth mentioning here in, the, in, in this update as well. Uh, just very quickly to give a summary of what, what, what this is. So what is Vault? Vault is a product data management platform that helps design teams organize, track, and manage design data. Um, what are the Vault APIs? The Vault Data APIs let you access and interact with data stored on the Vault server, reducing manual effort and eliminating the need for additional desktop applications. We use the API to build integrations that automate uh, complex or, or repetitive workflows, including things like search and retrieval of data, file operations, job processing, user, user sessions, account management, and handling of items and change orders. So largely this is integrating Vault with other systems or other platforms. Uh, so who benefits from the Vault Data APIs? Uh, one of the key benefits is connectivity. Uh, the Vault Data APIs allow developers to create extensions on top of Vault, which extend the connectivity from Vault Data to other tools and applications. The APIs make it possible to integrate Vault with software as a service cloud applications like the Autodesk Platform Services, uh, Microsoft Teams, Power BI, SAP, and many, many more, of course. Uh, of course, Symmetry ourselves. Uh, in Symmetry, we have Civilia Vault, which is an automation tool for Autodesk Vault. We have Civilia Connect, uh, various connectors that allow us to connect Vault with various different applications, including some of our own, like Civilia Core, which is a PLM application. And we could also link the Civilia Configurator to Civilia Core or Civilia Vault. So again, just having the ability to use these Vault data APIs has improved the workflow when it comes to developing these applications. And there is a reference guide for all of the various Vault data APIs that can be used uh, on the Autodesk Platform Services website. Uh, one final thing before I wrap up, uh, just having a quick look at the system requirements for Autodesk Vault 2026, and I just put 2025 up here side by side with it. Um, same server operating systems are supported. Um, the support for SQL Server 2017 has been dropped. And if you continue down the page, the uh, CPU and processing speed and RAM and all are, are identical between 2025 and 2026. So just something to be aware of is the dropping of SQL 2017. So that is what's new in Vault. Uh, thanks for your time. Uh, hopefully this has been beneficial. Uh, just a quick summary of the key features that stand out. Um, the archive functionality is very big. The trash bin is very useful. Job queue priority, the user account disabled timeouts, uh, hyperlinks in Vault, and of course the Vault data APIs. So that's it for me. You can reach me directly at adam.murphy at symmetry.com or reach out to your account manager and you can organize a demo or arrange a call for any requirements you may have. Thanks.